So here's the latest then. The government is applying for an injunction to stop climate change protesters from blocking traffic on the M25. On several occasions, as I'm sure you're aware, activists from Interlake Britain have brought parts of the uh, country's busiest motorway, including stretches here in Kent, to a standstill. Now, the Home Secretary Prit Patel and the Transport Secretary Grant Shapp said the activists were endangering people's lives. The group Interlake Britain has previously said its actions are entirely proportionate. Now, before we talk to Fiona from Interlake Britain, let's get the latest from Mark Thompson, political commentator and journalist who joins us this morning. Mark, thank you for being here. Um, Now, we hear the word injunction quite a lot, but what does it actually mean in this instance? So what it means in this in- instance is that when um, people are arrested for um, doing these protests, they're actually going to be in contempt of court, which means that they can then be held rather than be arrested and then released. They'll be held. And it, it feels to me like this is a measure that the government is is seeking for a couple of reasons. I think, firstly, they want to be seen to be doing something about this situation. Um, and I think, secondly, um, to try and kind of take the air out of the protests because, you know, as more and more people are arrested and held, there are just fewer and fewer protesters oh. to actually be able to go out and do the protests. I see. And what has Priti Patel herself said about those protesters? Well, her and Grant Schatz have written a, a piece for the Daily Mail. Um, and, you know, and it's exactly what you'd expect, you know, that they're saying that... Um, you know, the, this is the wrong way to do it and we'll give, you know, the police powers to, to manage such guerrilla tactics and so forth. I was particularly struck, though, by one line in it, you know, which says, uh-huh. we all agree that climate change must be tackled, but this sort of behaviour achieves nothing. But I don't think you can really honestly argue that because I wouldn't be talking to you this morning yes. about this <laughs> protest if it yes. wasn't for the fact. I mean, it's been it's been in the news bulletins. You know, I, I've, yes. I've heard it twice in the last 24 hours. I heard... Um, uh, you know, Evan Davis on um, uh, PM. Radio 4 t- yeah. uh, PM yesterday interviewing a protester. And I also heard Justin, Justin Webb on today mm. this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is getting this message forward. And the main argument, and I'm sure um, Fiona, who you're going to have on um, soon, yeah. will make this same point that, you know, they have tried the polite way of doing things, writing letters, you know, lobbying, uh, and it hasn't gotten anywhere. Now, the thing is, you really do hit a moral question here because Mm -hmm. as uh, one of the interviewers who was interviewing one of these protesters pointed out what if everyone decided that their own personal political priorities justified wandering out into the middle of motorways and blocking traffic you know it would be absolute chaos so you know we as a society we can't allow this to happen but at the same time to say this sort of behavior achieves nothing is is pretty disingenuous it definitely does and what they're looking to do is move the political debate onto the issue of insulating homes and that is what is happening and it, yeah. these tactics do work yes i mean i hadn't heard of insulate britain before all of these protests oh, yeah. which i think underlines the point um, and i think you might enjoy actually you talked about the mail uh, the irony here you know talking about the eco mob on the front page actually if you turn to page 39 it says extra help to keep warm this winter to save on your fuel bills keep costs down number one is insulate your homes that's their advice <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does show that, like, you know, we're in a bit of a strange situation where, I mean, the government, it's not like the government are doing nothing, but this protest group are arguing that they're not doing enough and it's more a question of focus. Now, obviously, what's not going to happen is the government isn't going to turn around and hold the hands up and say, yeah, okay, we're going to do exactly what you said. But, you know, I I suspect that this will have moved up the political agenda um, and it will be by dint of the protest. You remember the, uh, the fuel protest? in um, 2001 yeah. where they were arguing for a reduction in duty and you know the government was like well you know we're not we're not going to respond to this we're not going to be blackmailed into doing stuff but Gordon Brown within a few days of those protests very quietly did reduce the duty yes. on a certain type of fuel which then suddenly became the fuel that most petrol stations were selling within a few months so they did respond and like I say you know I and mean, I'm sure these protesters have probably got one eye on, on previous situations like that where you know quietly the government won't it won't make any, um, you know, any any great announcements about it, but just quietly, you know, there'll be ministers looking at this and, and thinking about it in a way they probably weren't before. No, indeed. And, you know, this isn't going to be far from Boris Johnson's radar, considering that he's going to take the reins at COP26 and he wants to be seen as leading the world on climate change, doesn't it? That's, I guess, one of the legacies that he's hoping to leave. 
Well, this group does seem to be very media savvy. I mean, I mentioned that, um, you know, I'd heard a couple of them being interviewed and I did notice, yes. Anna, that they were very keen, Anna, to make sure that they were using the name of the interviewer, Anna, every time that they were speaking to them, Anna. So, <laughs> well, um, you know, I, yeah. I, I, think, I think that they've been, I think they've been media trained and I think they've timed this because they know COP26 is coming up. You mm. know, Boris Johnson is actually in America at the moment talking to Joe Biden about this stuff. You know, I think they've timed this thing very well. And I think, you know, the fact that they are so media savvy um, in what they're doing is um, is quite telling in terms of, you know, how, um, you know, how effective uh, this campaign does seem to, to, to be being. Like I say, you, you said you'd not heard of them. I hadn't heard of them a couple of days yeah. ago either. Yeah, indeed. And uh, we both, I think, heard the same interview with a campaigner yesterday. And he said, didn't he? OK, I might be arrested. That's not going to stop me. It's not going to deter me. So will this move by the government, you know, moving the chess pieces have any effect? So I think it depends how many people they've got in reserve. Like if they've only okay. got the people we've seen, they'll be arrested, they'll be held, and then they won't really, it'll, it'll fizzle out because there won't be anyone around to be able to do the process. Sure. Yeah, they will eventually be released and maybe they'll have another go. But you know what the news cycle's like. The news cycle will have moved on and it will be mm. very much, oh, you know, this lot again. What it, you know. So th- they need to keep the momentum going. But if they've got people in reserve who can just keep coming out onto the motorways and getting arrested, then this could actually go on for, for quite a lot longer. But I suspect... Given how media savvy they are, I think they'll recognise themselves within the next day or two that they've made their point, um, and there probably isn't, you know, they, they, they will, it will be diminishing returns the longer they go on because people will just start getting really annoyed with them. Interesting stuff. Listen, Mark, always good to talk to you. Thank you for being with us this morning. We'll talk to you soon. That's Mark Thompson, political commentator. And as we mentioned, joining us now, we can talk to Fiona Atkinson, who is a spokesperson for Interlake Britain and was listening to that. So, Fiona, you're welcome to use my name as as many times as you like here. Um, (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) That's a pleasure. Now, let's start with, I guess, the question you're expecting this morning, Fiona, and it's about your methods, isn't it? You know, people are getting frustrated Mm. and tired at being Mm. held up. And of course, some of those people will be there on their way to hospital appointments and and very serious stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And those of us taking part in this action are all ordinary people who completely understand those sort of dilemmas. And we are very, very sorry. Um, And any time a story emerges of particular suffering, we're all horrified and it does affect us emotionally. But equally, this situation that the world is facing affects us emotionally, and in particular in Britain. I mean, I don't know about you, but where I live in um, Kendall, there are housing developments going up everywhere. I see no solar panels. They've all got gas central heating. There's nothing being done that I can see. And I do find it quite interesting that the government have swept into action to try and stop the protests. What about them sweeping into action to insulate some homes? Um, I I can't help thinking that would be a a good use of their time. And and as I mentioned with Mark, you know, I guess on one level, Fiona, you you must feel that you've achieved something already because I and Mark hadn't heard of your organisation before this. But but whenever I hear you interviewed, I understand that you've been around a long time trying to make your point and it's only now that you've cut through. Absolutely. Like a lot of people, and there'll be listeners out there, you know, loads of us have been supporting Greenpeace, Friends of the Earth. Some of us have joined XR. Uh, some of us have campaigned locally for uh, green issues. And where has it got us? We are in the state that we're in because, in the end, the fossil fuel companies have a bigger influence over our governments than ordinary people like us. So this is really about ordinary people saying, um, can we have the support that we that we need it, it's it, we can't do enough on our own we can all recycle we can turn our heating down but not many of us can afford to put solar panels on our roof particularly no. with the withdrawal of subsidies and we and lots of us don't own our own houses and what we're asking for which seems to me a really reasonable request is that the government makes sure that every uh, social housing um, development is fully insulated and we just believe that this is something we could get on with and do. Um, it's practical. It's an action. It's not talk. Um, Fiona, um, I've got to put this to you as well. I don't know whether you saw this. Yeah. It was in the paper yesterday in The Sun. Um, uh, another irony, if you like, there was a man whose job it is to put insulation yeah. into people's home. He, he's Tom Watson. He's self-employed and he yeah. was furious because he said, um, insulate Britain, I'm trying to, but you're holding me yeah. up. What do you say yeah. to that? 
Well, I just say whenever you take disruptive action, there are there is fallout and it does affect people. And it could be me and you another day. Um, it's yes. to, it was Tom yesterday, and I'm really sorry, but there is a big picture here. And if we all carry on just focusing on our area, important as that is, we're not going to get anywhere. We really need people power to shift government into action so what i'd say to anybody listening out there please please do everything you can to support uh, us pressing the government into acting on its own targets we are due to miss our own targets if we don't take action and um, fiona so another question we're slightly short on time but um you know you've heard yeah. about this injunction are, are you prepared to be arrested to perhaps even go to prison over this over the injunction. I'm not down there now uh-huh. um, and my personal circumstances are such that um, it would make it very difficult for me but I have a re- I have um, experienced situations where I could be arrested. I've been with XR in London and uh-huh. occupied roads where police are arresting people and I would be willing to be arrested um, and I think that feeling grows in me. At first I was horrified okay. um, yeah. but, but that feeling grows as the inaction um, goes on. And I wonder what you make of this as well. I mean, I know you will have seen the newspaper coverage, but it, it's quite classist, isn't it? It seems to think that you lot are all posh. They, Tarquin is a word that comes up quite a lot. <laughs> well, I'm sure there are a few Tarquins amongst us, <laughs> but I've also met nurses, plumbers, decorators. Uh-huh. Um, a, 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 there are a lot of retired people uh, out there, um, and, and that's because we that's because we can choose to spend the our time. time that way. But yeah. there's lots of other people who are ordinary workers who are taking time out when they get that charge that they're unemployed. We're, we're, we're either posh, aren't we? Um, posh middle class people or we're lazy layabouts without jobs. That's and it. and I, I've got to say, neither of those is true. <laughs> Indeed. Well, listen, Fiona, it's really good to get your side of the story. Thank you for being with us this morning. As I say, we're out of time for now, but please do keep in touch with us uh, here yeah, on The Wake thank Up. Thank you. Thanks very much for airing it so far. Thank you. Not a problem, not a problem. That's Fiona then. And I'd love your response to those protests. I'm sure you've got strong views. You can get in touch and let me know. How do you feel about people like Fiona using those tactics? And I suppose if you're one of those people who've been caught up in it all, then you might feel quite strongly.